So, last weekend I went to see Deadpool and Wolverine like any other normal person would and thought to myself, I wonder why I didn't make a video about the Deadpool game before the movie's release. Or maybe a video for Wolverine Origins or perhaps something out of the retro box like X2 Wolverine's Revenge. Now, that would be something different. Anyways, late but not forgotten, today I would like to speak about this fourth wall breaking, drowning absurdity experience of 2013. You might be lucky if you find a PlayStation 3 or an Xbox One copy, Steam keys of these Deadpool bad boys can be bought only for over a thousand dollars or something. Anyways, I'm Mark out here, and today I will be talking about Deadpool's one and only video game. Deadpool, released in 2013, is a hack and slash, action third person shooter kind of an experience developed by High Moon Studios and published by Activision. It's well known for its irreverent humor, breaking the fourth wall, and uninspired level design. However, it captures Deadpool's true essence with its chaotic, entertaining, and unorthodox nature. Deadpool's unpredictable and manic personality leads the main direction. It turns into something more than the narrative itself, sometimes making the whole journey memorable, sometimes funny, and occasionally disappointing. The entire journey is intentionally nonsensical. It begins with Deadpool breaking into the headquarters of High Moon Studios to demand his own video game while talking and doing nonsensical Deadpool stuff with his other personalities. From the very start, Deadpool acknowledges that he is in a video game. Other than the other X-Men who appear besides Deadpool, he recognizes and is willing to shape his own video game with a good ending. With lots of explosions, lots of babes and deaths. While directly addressing the player when it's necessary as well as commenting on the progress of his journey or the development team High Moon's decisions. Calling this the meta-narrative might be correct but other than that it's just Deadpool being Deadpool. He doesn't break the fourth wall, he just makes love with it. Deadpool receives a contract to assassinate a media boss named Chance White and goes in guns blazing, full of action, as the players are introduced to game's core mechanics, the action, the stealth, and the upgrades. Basically the overall concept of this 6 hours long experience. Deadpool provides constant commentary, shooting whatever he sees, as he finds himself caught in a larger conspiracy involving Mr. Sinister a notorious villain from the X-Men universe. Sinister has taken over the island of Genosha, a place that used to be a paradise for mutants under the rule of Magneto. Genosha has been attacked by the Sentinels, its inhabitants are annihilated and, now, full of Mr. Sinister copies and clones, trying to fulfill Mr. Sinister's sinister plans? As the narrative is shaped and driven by Deadpool's interactions with X-Men like Wolverine, Rogue, Cable and Psylocke, around the latter half, Deadpool even meets with his beloved Death. Living the best of his life while killing more sinister clones to set the mutant spirits free. While Deadpool's BFF Cable with his serious demeanor and no-nonsense attitude contrasts sharply with Deadpool's irreverence. Their interactions, filled with comedic moments and meta-references, are some of the most memorable sequences of this experience. Before digging further into the Deadpool experience with the gameplay mechanics, I want to talk about the marvelous performance of Nolan North for a bit. He is the heart and the soul of Deadpool with his performance. Nolan North captures Deadpool's manic energy and irreverent humor with his constant chatter, meta-commentary and unpredictable behavior, simply carrying the game. Since the gameplay aspects can feel repetitive and shallow during some sequences. Deadpool's gameplay blends hack and slash combat, platforming and shooting mechanics, although the combat system allows players to fluidly switch between melee and range attacks, 
The melee side is relatively shallow when compared to other hack and slash titles. During my most recent run, I didn't even unlock the hammer and the side weapons of Deadpool, focused only on the katana and the ranged weapons, so the whole experience turned into Deadpool, either slicing his enemies into pieces or just blasting them into pieces. While flashy and true to Deadpool's character, I found the melee combat lacking the depth seen in other hack and slash games, combos are limited, and the moveset doesn't evolve beyond the basics. The variety in melee weapons such as katanas, hammers and size add some kind of a spice but still many players and myself included might find little reason to stray from the reliable katanas due to their balance of speed and power. I remember purchasing the size and the hammer during my initial playthrough and not having fun with these weapons. So, I stuck with sending my favorite bullets to the walking and talking targets this time. Contrary to the shallow hack and slash fiesta, ranged combat offers more variety and excitement. Deadpool's arsenal includes pistols, shotguns, machine guns and even plasma rifles. Whether you equip shotgun or a plasma rifle, for some reasons only known by Deadpool, we dual wield these ranged weapons. I guess to create the feeling of a massacre during long fights. One other mechanic is to mix the hack and slash gameplay with the shooting, meaning that Deadpool can end his melee combos by firing his range weapon in a close range to deal even more damage or to finish an enemy he is coping with. Though it does little to mask the repetitive nature of the encounters. All of these fights, bloodshed and tears they all serve a purpose. The upgrade system. The upgrade system adds a layer of progression to your Deadpool experience, albeit a simplistic one. Players collect Deadpool points by defeating enemies and finding hidden items throughout the levels, and as you can guess, these points can be used to purchase upgrades for weapons and abilities. Maybe to enhance Deadpool's maximum health and regenerative capabilities, or even cause bleed damage with katanas, since they are sharp and make people bleed. These upgrades include increased damage, faster reload times and additional combo moves, though again these upgrades do not drastically change the gameplay experience, which might disappoint players looking for deeper customization and progression that can be seen in titles like Devil May Cry. Although Deadpool makes a lot of fourth wall breaking jokes about going over to budget with unnecessary explosions and stuff, it really feels like Activision was quite stingy for Deadpool. This could have been a really satisfying hack and slash experience after all. Besides all these mutant killing, bullet shooting, fourth wall breaking experience, Deadpool's gameplay flow mainly consisting platforming sections, these segments are not particularly challenging or innovative, serving more as a breather between combat encounters rather than as standout features in their own right, since Deadpool does not have any boss battles that you would expect from a Marvel superhero type of an experience. One of the standout aspects of Deadpool's gameplay is its incorporation of fourth wall breaking elements directly into the mechanics. It's not just their self-awareness of Deadpool, but also the situation's absurdity. Deadpool even manipulates the game's HUD or shifts it to 8-bit retro style, or listens to Cable's explanations until Deadpool reaches his limit. This unexpected, utmost absurdity is what makes Deadpool memorable rather than its hack and slash or shooting mechanics or gameplay. It is the developer's willingness to experiment and embrace the character's unique personality. In addition to that, when Nolan North's flawless performance of voice acting is brought to the table, Deadpool becomes a memorable Deadpool experience if anyone wants to play a Deadpool game, not a hack and slash title featuring Deadpool in it. The game's humor, faithful adaptation of the Deadpool character and willingness to break conventional game design rules resonated with many players, embracing its titular character's chaotic and unpredictable nature. 
While it may not be a masterpiece in terms of gameplay and design, it excels in delivering a humorous and entertaining experience that captures the essence of Deadpool. The game's self-awareness, irreverent humor, and bizarre sequences make it a standout title that offers a unique take on the action genre. For fans of Deadpool and those looking for a game that doesn't take itself too seriously, Deadpool is still worth checking out. But if you are just looking for a superhero game, you might be quite disappointed. Or maybe a lot. However, its strengths lie in its commitment to the character's unique personality and its boldness in breaking the traditional game design conventions. By fully embracing Deadpool's comic book roots, the developer team High Moon created an experience that stands out with its quirky, unorthodox aspects, so if you are looking for the Deadpool experience, you are in the right place. As always, thank you for watching today's video. Which retro title or the superhero game would you like to see next? Any humble support through Patreon and YouTube join is really appreciated. And I will see you soon in my next video.